I just want to clear up some uh, confusion that might have happened because of, of one of the problems in the last video. And actually, it's a good chance to understand things a little bit more deeply. So one of the problems I did in the last video was this. And this was sent to me by a viewer. And it was the integral, the definite integral, from I think it was e to the x to e to the fourth of, and then they had a dx on top over x times the square root of ln x. And another viewer pointed out something, and, and it's actually a really good point, that right here, I mean, I, I did this mechanically, and you know, to some degree, I got the right answer, where I just took the antiderivative of this using u substitution, unwound the u substitution, and then evaluated kind of the antiderivative at this point and at this point. But one thing to, to realize, you know, this right here, this is a shorthand for this. The limits of integration, we want to take essentially the area under the curve from x equals e to the x to x equals, sorry, x equals e to the fourth of this thing right here. And now all of a sudden, when you look at it this way, keeping the lim having the same variable in the limits of integration as you do in the actual integral of itself, or what you're taking the area under the curve of, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You can't have x equal e to the x. I mean, you could have some type of, I don't know, iterative formula or something, but this is a little bit, this this isn't, um, this isn't good, I guess is the best way to do it. So if it, a correct way to construct this problem, it should have been written something like this. Let me do another color. Green for correct. So this problem should have been written something like y is equal to the integral from e to the x to e to the fourth of, instead of using x, it could have used any other variable, like let's say t of dt over t times the square root of the natural log of t. And now you don't run this problem because you're running from the, the, the function that you're taking the integral of is defined in terms of t. So you're, and then the boundaries are t is equal e to the x to t is equal to e to the fourth. And now you don't run into this kind of weird defining a variable in terms of itself and, and you know that to some degree that's, that's not appropriate. So uh, that's one point, and and the other point I want, and this is all pointed out by I think his his name is uh, I don't know if it's if it, it, it I'm assuming it's a he, uh, cognito ego sum who uh, who pointed this out, and it was a good thing to point out. And this is I mean you know this is how the problem should have been written. And the other thing that he pointed out was, you know, when do you do the the you know I do use substitution in this example in the last video, and then I don't change the limits of integration. But what I did do is I just unwound it. So let me show you the example. I just want to clarify this confusion and show you that you could do it either way. So let's do this integral right here. So in the last time, you know, watch the last video if you want the details on this. But we said u is equal to the natural log of t, and then du dt is going to be equal to one over t or du is equal to 1 over t dt. Just multiplied both sides of this by dt. And so if we look at that, if I rewrite this integral up here, let me do it down here. It could be rewritten as, <coughs> excuse me, y is equal to the integral from, and I want to be careful. I want to write t is equal to e to the x, 2t is equal to e to the fourth of what was it? It was the natural log of x was under the square root sign, and that's in the denominator. Let me just write that as the natural log of t, sorry, not natural log of x, natural log of t, to the minus 1 half times 1 over t dt. All I did is I rewrote this right here. right? I just said this is the same, the square root in the denominator, that's just natural log of t to the minus 1 half times 1 over t, right? This is the same thing as 1 over t. And then you can put the dt out here, right? You're just multiplying them all. And so I just rewrote the equation right there like this. And now if we do the u, the u substitution, this right here is our u. We said u is equal to natural log of t. Made that definition right there. And then du is sitting right here. So you get this is du. And the way I knew that, and you should Rewatch that video if you found this confusing. So I'm going a little faster because I just want to clarify some of the confusion that might be around kind of unwinding the, the substitution. But the way that I knew to do that is you have a function and you have its derivative sitting right here. So that's what tells you that this should be what u is equal to. But anyway, if you make the substitution, and this is key, you get y is equal to the integral from t is equal to 
e to the x to t is equal to e to the fourth. And we did our u substitution, u to the minus 1 half du. And now there's two ways that you could, you could think about this integral from here. You could just continue to take the antiderivative of this and then unwind the substitution. And that's what I did in the last video. So I'll do that first. And then the other option is to just change the limits of integration and, and essentially stay in the u world. So let's do it the first way. So this is a pretty in easy integral to solve. The, the antiderivative of u to the minus 1 half, we increase this exponent by 1 so that you get u, u to the 1 half, sorry, not, not minus 1 half, u to the 1 half, and then you divide by that number, which is the same thing as dividing by 1 half is the same thing as multiplying by 2. And you can, if you take the derivative of this, it should come out to that. 1 half times 2 is 1. Lower this by 1, you get minus 1 half. And then you want to evaluate that from t is equal to e to the x to t is equal to e to the fourth. Well, you don't have a t sitting here, so what you want to do is unwind unwind the substitution. So this is the same thing as 2. What was u equal to? u, we defined it as the natural log of t. So it's 2 times the natural log of t to the 1 half evaluated from t is equal to e to the x to t is equal to e to the fourth. And this is what I did in the last video. Now, an equally legitimate thing to do is you could have actually redefined the boundaries here in terms of u. So let me do that. I'll do that in, in purple. I don't want to lose this up here. So we could have said, we know that u is equal to the natural log of t. Right? We know that u is equal to the natural log of t. That was our substitution. So when t is equal to e to the x, what is u equal to? So u would be equal to the natural log when t is equal to e to the x. e to the x, well, that's just equal to x. So this boundary, so we could rewrite the integral as y is equal to the integral. When t is equal to e to the x, u is equal to x. And when t is equal to e to the fourth, what is u equal to? Well, u is equal to the natural log of whatever t is. So when t is e to the fourth, the natural log of e to the fourth is 4. What power do we have to raise e to to get e to the fourth? We have to raise it to the fourth power. So it's the integral from x to 4 of u to the minus 1 half du. And now these boundaries are from u is equal to x to u is equal to 4. And this is a really important thing to realize, and you know, not think about it mechanically. And, and that's why I appreciate, uh, I'll, I'll call him Cognito for short, I appreciate his comment, because it does, it, you know, it, it does make you appreciate that you what what the boundaries really you know what variable they really are being defined in and now this we can just do it the same way this is equal y is equal to the antiderivative which is just 2u to the 1 half and now we just evaluate from x from sorry from u is equal to x people seldom write u is equal to x but it's good when you're doing substitution 2 u is equal to 4 and then that is equal to 2 x to the 1 half minus 2 times 4 to the 1 half, 2 times 4 to the 1 half, which is, oh, sorry, no, I'm, I always switch. You have to do the, the upper boundary first. So this is 2 times 4 to the 1 half minus 2 times x to the 1 half. And that's, you know, you could watch my videos on that, but that's if you're taking a, you know, why do you do the upper boundary first if this is the function? And these are the two boundaries. In this case, this would be 4, and this is x. So when you take the integral to 4, you're kind of getting everything up, up to that point. And then you subtract out everything up to this point, because what you want to be left with is everything right there. And that's why you do that. So then this is, let's see, 4 to the 1 half. This is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 2x to the 1 half. Anyway, I appreciate uh, Cognito's uh, comment there, and uh, hopefully that clears up clears up a little bit about indefinite integration. Oh, about definite integration using u substitution. And I want to point out, it doesn't matter what order you go in, and it really they, they they end up essentially doing the same thing, just at slightly different stages in when you're evaluating the problem.